watching Rogers TV, Cornerbrook. The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. Hello folks, thank you for taking the time to join us here today on Our Community. My name is Kevin Young and I have with me a very good friend of mine. Uh, you may know him, Aubrey Saunders. Aubrey, thank you Pleased for to be here. joining us. Excellent. Um, Aubrey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Wow, where to start? <laughs> <laughs> An open-ended question. Yeah. Well, I was born in Montreal. Oh, wow. And when, we were when I was five, we moved to Lower Sackville, just outside Halifax, mm -hmm. and stayed in Lower Sackville until I was 24. I had met a nice young lady when I was in university, and uh, when, we grad when she graduated law school, she had work lined up here in Cornerbrook. And as a teacher, right. you can get in line almost anywhere, so I chose to come to Cornerbrook and got in line. And felt like an outsider for a long time. The first year that I was in Cornerbrook was very hard. Now, it wasn't because of the people. The right. people were very accepting and encouraging and uh, getting you involved in things. But just, I suppose, personally, I, it was the first time that I was away from home and right. found it very difficult. And having no work and having substitute work, so you'd work a little bit and then some tutoring. But I had taken a, a number of courses in anthropology, which oh. made me kind of analyze the way that things were going. So I always felt like I was kind of like somebody on an away mission in Star Trek, right, kind of right. learning about this new society. But uh, Picard oh. or Kirk? <laughs> this would have been uh, <laughs> Captain Kirk. Kirk, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Well, you know, I've uh, I've known you since uh, I guess the late '90s mm -hmm. was when we would have met, and uh, I've gotten to know you a bit over the time. And I know that you're you're very involved in a lot of things within the community, and people have got a chance uh, to know you. But uh, as I had mentioned to you, one of the things that uh, I remember from you was uh, the fencing club that uh, that you were a part of right. and you were taught. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that and, and and what happened there. And I think you're saying. It's coming back. It's, it's made a comeback. Well, let's see. Uh, when I was uh, a kid, uh, I was about 13 or 14, and in Halifax, there was a huge advertisement for the Commonwealth Games were going to be in Edmonton. And so they had a series of small sessions where they would go to a gym, introduce fencing to people, and then have a competition. Right. It was called Challenge of the Galaxy. And of course, in the wake of the Star Wars movies, it was a big hit. So there was competition in Lower Sackville, and it happened that me and my brother and a good friend of ours uh, qualified for the next competition, which was in Halifax. Wow. And we met so many people there and had such a great time that when a club started in our area, we pursued it. So from the ages of like 14 to 21, I was pretty competitive fencer and would go to competitions around Canada, mostly in central Canada, but I've gone to nationals much times. Wow. And then, so that would have been the early 90s. So then I had to focus mostly on university. And uh, when I came to Cornerbrook, they're going to have the Canada Winter Games in 1999. So yes. in 1997, I was asked to help out with the fencing. And in order to help organize the fencing, all you really need to do is have the venue. Mm -hmm. But we needed to have scorers and timekeepers that were knowledgeable about the sport. So I started a fencing club in order to get people interested in that. And we ended up having uh, some athletes try out from Cornerbrook and from Labrador. My oh, friend wow. Gronway Price was over there and he uh, taught a group and I taught a group and together we made uh, the fencing team. And uh, so that was 99. There was also a fencing team in 2007 and in that time there had also been the development of a club in St. John's. Now there may have been a club that had been ongoing for a long period of time right? but it only came to my attention kind of in the early 2000s and then uh, 
so 2003, 2007, and I think that's kind of where I ran out of gas as a coach. Right, and, right. Uh, so it's been kind of dormant since then. But mm -hmm. along comes Dmitry Sveshnikov, who's a University. biology prof. A wonderful man. And he's so energetic, yeah. and he has been an organizational tornado right. in getting things organized. And uh, last year we started a club, and uh, this year, so if people are interested in trying it out, they should uh, contact Dmitry. Okay, so wh what night of the week is that? Currently, it is Wednesdays, I think from 6.30 to 8, right. and Saturday from 4.30 to 6. Now, back when I was uh, doing this with you, it was at Herdman. Is it still in the same, now, Cornbrook Regional High? Or no, it is at Grenfell. It's at Grenfell? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So all the equipment has been moved up to Grenfell, and yeah. I I'm sure we've got enough to uh, accommodate uh, a new group of learners, but we're trying to uh, court learners who are, you know, uh, kind of a little bit older, m mature, uh, like maybe really mature junior high kids or high school kids, right. uh, definitely the university kids. Of course. People who would be, you know, able to conduct themselves. Excellent, excellent. So, so hopefully that, you know, those who are watching, um, if, if you have an interest at all in fencing, please, uh, you know, do look that up. It was a lot of fun. I know I enjoyed myself and I'm sure many others uh, have. Yeah. Uh, so aside from fencing, what else do you kind of do with your spare time? Well, I'm looking around here in this beautiful Rogers TV studio, and I have been involved in tennis for a long time. Right. So a long time ago, I had been involved with the tennis club when it was in back of the RecFlex. Yes, yes, and up by the uh, university there, yeah. One summer in particular, Rogers agreed to bring a camera up and cover our club championships. Wow. And so there were two of our coaches who were doing color commentary. It was hilarious. We were yeah. in the yeah. basement of my house watching the tennis take place here in our own community. It was fantastic. It was Awesome, great. awesome. So you still play a bit of tennis at all? I still play some, but yeah. uh, I haven't been as involved within the, uh, the tennis community. And each year I start off in like May and June saying, this year I'm going to get back into tennis, but then I only end up playing a few times. But right, uh, right. I still have a real passion for the game. That's awesome, and, and I, I think I see you running as well. I think you're part of the running club. So I really do, uh, having moved to Cornerbrook, mm -hmm. I got to change seasons, yes. change sports and seasons. So one of the first things that uh, I had to adjust to in Cornerbrook was the winter. Right. And so I kind of put the running on hold and tried to learn to cross-country ski. So right now I'm still kind of in skiing season, mm -hmm. and there's a, a marathon and half marathon in Stephenville uh, next weekend. Right. So that's kind of kind of mark the end of my cross country skiing season. I look forward to seeing all the nice people in Stephenville out there. I was out there for one race uh, already. The the Masters uh, was two weekends ago. Right. And they do a great job of hosting, and I look forward to being part of the the provincial half marathon this time around. Fantastic. So the running for me will start up again, uh, kind of in March. Right. The roads are getting pretty good now, so uh, it, it should be pretty safe. And then. The, the swimming and biking as well for the, the, the triathlon season. Right, so. right. So, so you're a teacher full time. I am. You're involved in a lot of these different um, uh, athletic endeavors. Right. Uh, any, any points or tips for uh, people out there that are full timers that want to get more physically active? Oh, just start. Yeah. The, the biggest barrier is thinking you can't do it. Right. Once you just get out and uh, sometimes it's a big help to uh, get off the couch with people. The YMCA runs a great program there, Couch to 5K, which aims at getting people to do the, the downtown dash. Right. One of the great events in Cornerbrook is the downtown dash. Yes. Have you ever been able to I, I've, I've never participated, but I have seen and I've had many a friend of family that have. It's, oh, it's such a lovely event. There's uh, parents and kids. There's lots of, I love seeing other people run. Right. Like uh, at the cross country running races in uh, Kippens in the fall, I love seeing little kids run. They just run pure heart. They just give it everything they have. And that's, that's the great. downtown dash is like that. That is awesome. Yeah. So the downtown dash, something I'm going to have to look forward to myself maybe this summer. <laughs> hey, that'd be <laughs> um, great. Because it is, I ask you as a question, not only for our viewers, but for me as well, because I am a couch potato. Oh. And, and, I, and I, I, I would love to be more active and to get out and do a bit more. So. Uh, what do you think as, as a beginner? What should I try? You mentioned the YMCA, the Couch to Five. Is there yeah. something else you might recommend for us couch potatoes? Just starting. Just doing a small amount of activity is right. a great start. And try and make it a, a regular part of your day. Like uh, 
if you can commit, you know, three mornings a week or something. For me, I'm a morning person. Right. So if I'm going to get something done, it's usually got the best success if I can get it and kind of have it out of the way early. Before you get to school to teach. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, on the topic of teaching, you mentioned that you moved here um, when you were younger. Yes. Um, uh, I don't want to assume your age, but I assume it was <laughs> a few years ago. Uh, so how long have you been teaching here? So I taught one year in Nova Scotia, one full year, right. in a really small community on what's called Long Island, yes. which is uh, just one boat ride away from Digby. Right. And actually, uh, my brother-in-law thought I was in New York the whole year. <laughs> and then when I came here, I was substituting mostly around Cornerbrook. And uh, even... Uh, Two years of substituting around here, then in my third year, I got a replacement position out in Bay Roberts. Oh, wow. So I did uh, three months at Ascension Collegiate, which yeah. was another great experience. Great uh, group of people. Nice science department. Yeah. And uh, so my teaching career here, I think this is year, I always mess this up, but I think this is year 25. So after this year, I believe I'll have five more years of teaching. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's excellent. So, so you were teaching when I was in high school. Right. Uh, you had taught my son yes. uh, in high school. Yes. And if you're going to be there for five more years, you'll likely have an opportunity to uh, possibly teach my other two boys. So this is one of the things about <laughs> teaching. Is that you start to feel like a pylon. Yeah. You start to feel like you do the same thing or you're treading water and right. all these people pass you. Right. And you get to see them go on and do things. It's incredible. Uh, Last weekend, there was a Herdman-Regina basketball game up at our school. Yes, there was. And it was a great event. It was a fantastic opportunity. I think it's only the first. I think they're going to have another one next year because it was such a success. I think there was over 300 people came. It was super. But in the crowd, there were so many people who I taught who now have kids, and they're, they're moving around. And you, you try and remember, oh, my gosh, what year did they graduate? Right. So teaching is a great way to feel like you're part of the lives of your community. Well, I would imagine you've impacted many lives oh, over the years that, of teaching. But uh, <laughs> I hope more positively than negatively. You certainly have. And, and I know in, in my regard, uh, you certainly have. And uh, I don't know that my son that you taught last year uh, certainly feels uh, a lot of admiration toward you as well oh. uh, as, a, as a, having been a student. Um, so you taught um, physics. And what else was it you taught in high school? Uh, over the last number of years, I've taught a lot of science, mm -hmm. grade 10 science, science uh, 1206 and science 2200, and my degrees in chemistry. So I've taught yes. uh, some chemistry 2202 and 3202, and physics 2204 and 3204, and oh, I've taught environmental, no, not environmental science, earth no. systems. Earth systems, right. So I have, I have a personal interest in all of these areas. I think that there's so much interesting stuff that has happened on earth and in the universe and right. trying to figure out where all these elements came from, that you are made of the dust of stars. Right. You know, I mean. Neil deGrasse Tyson mentioned that uh, one. Ah, yes. That was fantastic. Yes. Yes. All astronomers like to throw that one out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so you talk about the universe and, and the stars. Uh, I know you're also a fan of Star Wars. Ah, Tell us a little bit about that nerd culture that you and I both share. Oh, well, the last couple of years, I think we've been spoiled. There have been so many Star Wars movies that have come out, almost mm -hmm. one a year yeah. for the last number of years. But there was a big drought of Star Wars material from, like, 1983 to 1999, mm -hmm. and then they kind of started. But I think you and I both uh, share an affinity for the worlds, the, the lifestyles, the uh, what we like... I'd say Jedi more than Sith. Right. But, uh, I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> well, I mean, that being said, I do know that you and I have both appeared in costume right. uh, at, at a Star Wars event. So I was a Jedi and you were? I was, uh, well, I was a Sith. A Sith, yeah. The last time yeah, around. You yeah. were, you were Kylo Ren. Right. I remember that very yeah. well. I couldn't yeah. remember if it was Obi-Wan Kenobi or Kylo Ren. It had to be Kylo Ren. Yeah. <laughs> it was Kylo Ren. That was fantastic. So uh, when it comes to Star Wars, I know that for me, uh, I love... Um, thinking about the possibilities within our universe and the possibilities of um, you know the uh, reaching out and expanse not only in our universe but also here on earth of course with the idea of diversity and I see that a lot in Star Wars and so when I watch Star Wars one of the things that has always 
intrigued me and captivated me was was the idea of you know politics um, one way, but but also with the idea of this, the um, diverse uh, world that existed and how it didn't matter where you were from, you kind of got along. And it's one of those things that growing up a bit of a nerd, it felt good to see that kind of a world. And, oh, I, and yeah. I think that it was a positive image for those who were in some way socially awkward or excluded from a lot of large groups. And I enjoyed that about Star Wars. Wow. Oh, okay. I can see how you would have gotten that message. I think that that's such an important message in today's whole world. The mm -hmm. a, I don't think acceptance is the right word, but the, the inclusion of all groups of people, all races, uh, mostly in the media now, we hear a lot about the LGBTQ right. and transgender people, and they should all feel like they're part of our community, because they are. You know, and everyone. that's one of the things about Cornerbrook that I've come to love. I mean, growing up, Cornerbrook was, uh, to use the term, homogenized very much so for for years and uh, you know and and now we see uh, so much more diversity in the city with not only the university of course being uh, an internationally accredited university but also with uh, work uh, you know various jobs we have uh, you know businesses that are started uh, by immigrants here in the mm -hmm. city as well that are doing absolutely fantastic and wonderful um, so there's a lot of that going on in the city as well would you comment a bit about that yeah in the last uh, five years or so I, I think Cornerbrook has seen kind of a, a flourishing in right. that way, very multicultural. And I've heard one friend say on, I think it was on a program, might have been on uh, Josh Connor's uh, recent show at the Rotary Arts Center, right. that he felt that Cornerbrook was the arts hub of Newfoundland. And it does feel like there are so many things that are possible here. Maybe it's because geographically it's a small area mm -hmm. and so people can be in touch with so many things within a short area, whereas in other communities you'd have to travel for like half an hour by car in order to take your piano lesson or yes, something yes. like that. Yeah, and, and I think part of, of, of that also goes hand in hand with um, the idea of the purpose of this show, and, and that is to create a sense of community awareness. So when people are coming here, um, you know, they're, they're coming here and feeling that sense of community. Good. And, and I think that, uh, unfortunately, I feel like it's, it's, it's been losing a little bit of that sense uh, here in the city. And uh, I, I would hope to bring it back. And, uh, of course, the reason being why, uh, why we have the show is to bring a sense of uh, community mindfulness and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, ideally, we're going to have, of course, guests that uh, live in the community, grow up in the community, and want to share a little bit about who they are uh, and about what they see in the community. And you and I were talking about this earlier as well, that you know, there are certain things in this community that, uh, that you see as, uh, as a positive thing. And there are other ideas that you mentioned that you would like to see uh, in this community help flourish. Would you mind sharing some of those? Oh my gosh, my mind is just full of ideas that I see partially taking place. Like, uh, I mentioned how as a teacher you feel like a pylon. Yes. And in particular, I've had uh, two people that I know uh, write books. Do you know Paul Carberry? I actually have his book. My or, son has his shirt. Or, or Kate Zombies Cook. on the Rock. <laughs> yes, Caitlin I do. Cook is another Absolutely. writer who uh, uh, I received uh, her uh, book as a gift at Christmas time as well. And so I, I suppose, daydream about the possibility of having movies made of right. like, their books in our area. And mm. I think it would be absolutely amazing to have like a zombie movie, just because that's like my <laughs> <laughs> my zone, right? Like right. a zombie movie in, and have just huge amounts of extras for, for these scenes. And, and when you see an event take place like the Canada Winter Games, you can see that large scale events are possible in Cornerbrook. And uh, the Pepsi studio had been a, uh, area where they were filming, I think it was Life with Derek right. for a long time. So th there are kind of the expertise within our community to You know, to we even had, like I think, G.C. Rowe back in the right, you know, like 90s exactly. was, a, was a backdrop for a yes. TV show as well yeah. that was on, I think it was a, a Disney Channel. So, so that'd be like one thing is that I could see yeah. Cornerbrook being used as a, a base for like, uh, let's say, movies and things like that. Mm -hmm. and. We, we saw them also, what was, they filmed a Viking movie down on the, uh, not the Port of Port Peninsula, but down, it was down near uh, Lark Harbor. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, I forget the name of the movie, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so that was one area. Then another one is, 
I think that we've got world-class geography and nature, and mm. I would love to see huge amounts of hiking trails and biking trails going not only around here through the Bay of Islands, but right up through the coast. And right taking advantage of these breathtaking views we have, like having a bridge go right over the Humber River by Marble Mountain, I think would be fantastic. Wouldn't that be? Oh, and there's going to be that uh, running race uh, this summer. There's a 50K running race that they're going to have, and I think that's going to help showcase some of that. You know, we had the uh, triathlon here, the half Ironman triathlon, which yes, showcased the... Uh, area as well but it just they ran into logistical problems with flights and things that could yes. meet the need of people and there's so many abilities uh, cross-country skiing yeah. you know like the Bloomington cross-country ski club the whaleback cross-country ski club and the pasadena ski club we've got these three ski clubs in this area wouldn't it be cool if they could host a national event kind of at the different venues oh yeah. So anyway, I see lots of possibilities. Right, right. And, 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 I, and I think, you know, to, to go with that, I was talking to a good friend of mine about some of the trails in the area, which would tie back to what we were talking about earlier about getting off the couch and being a little active. Right, yeah. Uh, the beauty of some of the trails, and you mentioned a bike trail, and, and uh, a friend of mine a couple of years ago, we actually uh, set cameras up through the Ginger Route oh. trail that goes from the, uh, up to the top of the highway by the ski club yep. and takes you down to Bowwater Park. Um, have you you've been that trail? I've been on the ginger route. Yep. Yeah. I, I've uh, walked it a number of times, and I've uh, snowshoed it. Yeah. And oh, that's another gem within the city. It that is. And so we had area. cameras set up, and we had you know, GoPros on our helmets and the bikes, and and we just filmed this whole thing, and it was wow. it was it was a lot of fun to do, and and we ended up um, uh, you know making something nice out of it, and then lost it. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I terrible. thought it would have been a great video to share with people to show the Ginger Root Trail, but but there are some really nice trails that do exist uh, here in terms of, uh, of of hiking and and walking. Uh, the Cornbrook Stream Trail, of course, being one that's been developed over uh, the last uh, several years uh, and whatnot. Um, but other than that, do you see uh, any other uh, beauty that uh, could be brought uh, to the city? There's beauty outside. But there's mm -hmm. also beauty within the walls of Cornerbrook. Right. One of the things that I think is so vibrant about our community is the ability to see live theater. You can yes. see it at not only the Arts and Culture Center, but the Rotary Arts Center is incredible. Mm -hmm. The Grenfell Theater, every yeah. year, was it twice a year, they have productions from their students. And, uh, oh my gosh, I wish I was better with names. But at the end of, uh, I think it was May last year, we went to see, a, it was a Shakespearean production but they had done it in like a science fiction theme. It was brilliant. I was so right. glad I got to go. That's fantastic. And, and of course, that ties into what you were saying about um, Cornerbrook being the art, uh, arts and culture hub, I guess, of, uh, of Newfoundland. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you know, there always is something on the go here uh, in that regard. I know some of my favorite things uh, to keep an eye out for are some of the uh, events that the Rotary Arts uh, certainly puts off because they have a lot of great uh, uh, skits they and shows. Do. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they've got a lot of great things. And uh, of course, you know, you and I both enjoy the, uh, the science fiction convention that comes annually. Absolutely. I uh, so feel so lucky that they have able to keep that going. And I'd love to see that just continue to grow. You know, they, they've been able to kind of, I think, and I'm not speaking for them, but they've been able to kind of shift the, uh, the focus to kind of meet more mainstream interest in things like anime and video games. And right. uh, I know that you had uh, taught a session on lightsabers that I took interest in, I think it was a couple years in a row. Yes, that I well, actually, felt I like a big kid, but <laughs> I didn't want to miss it. We do have not only a, a visually diverse community, um, but you know we have a, a diverse community here in a sense of um, uh, ideas like you know we, we have the athleticism we have the nature we have uh, the science and things like that but i'm wondering is there anything that you can think of that you know you, you see here in the individuals because you are in the high school you see a lot of uh, a lot of students that you think would be um, something that we can capitalize on here to help with that range of diversity to bring these groups that aren't doing something that uh, would pique their interest and, and actually have it brought here my gosh i think that almost every conceivable club or group or society is, you know, in some way could be uh, included in the current 
offerings within the city. You know, like I, I saw a poster the other day for uh, Winter Carnival Dungeons and Dragons group, and I said, right. that's great. You know, more opportunity to get out and try that type of thing as well. There's, you know, massive. Uh, pe people say that there's, you know, too many video games or something like that, but. Online communities are just as vibrant as well. You know, through my own, my son in particular, he's right. pretty interested in uh, a group of video games, and there's a massive culture surrounding it. And the people who get involved are like-minded, and I think that's what we see, you know, in the real world as well as the mm -hmm. virtual world. Absolutely, and and so my my thought process kind of sways toward looking at it and saying, I want to create a more um, uh, in-depth sense of, of community mindfulness, as I mentioned. Okay. And part of that would be looking at all of these different types of groups and clubs that we can um, you know, have established here that people can take advantage of to get them, you know, if you're an online gamer, let's get you sitting in a room with a bunch of other online gamers yeah. and let's you know, build a community that we're not just having a community online, but face to face. Oh, I see what you're saying there. Uh, yeah, wouldn't it be neat if, uh, just off the top of my head here, if there was such a, a group where uh, computer-interested people could look at the uh, maybe the programming towards uh, writing the software for, for games, coming right. up with games. Because there's a big component of, uh, a big push now on uh, trying to get people to code. Yes. So, you know, trying to capitalize on that. If there was somebody with the expertise who was willing to put in the time. Because that's a big thing, too. Like, there's a lot of people in the city who have expertise mm -hmm. but might not have the time to be able to volunteer and Absolutely. do things like that. So last question for you. All right. Because we're getting near the end of our programming. Where do you see yourself in the future here in Cornerbrook? Wow. Okay. So there's a couple of possibilities. Uh, when I retire, I was thinking, hmm, what should I do? I I've always wanted to be a paleontologist. Oh, wow. So maybe I'd study some more Earth systems and uh, go look for fossils somewhere. That's like a bucket list thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also th thinking about uh, applying to nursing and trying to have a second career as a nurse oh, wow. or a yeah. physiotherapist or a massage therapist or trying to pursue, I'm interested a little bit in uh, music with guitars Yeah. so I could... Uh, hey, what if they needed somebody to play like 80s rock music on a cruise ship or something? That Fantastic. would be my jam. So you've got a lot of ideas for that. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining me here and uh, telling our community a little bit about who Aubrey Saunders is well, thanks and, for having uh, and some of your ideas. So my absolute pleasure. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, folks, for taking the time to join us here on our community. Uh, I hope that you can come back uh, next time as well as we venture out to discuss and talk to more members of our community so that we can have a better understanding of community mindfulness. Thanks again. I'm Kevin. Bye for now. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to an old friend. But when you're saying farewell to your vehicle, Kidney Car makes it fast and easy. Just call or visit our website. We'll take any vehicle in any condition and give you a tax receipt for a minimum of $300. No headaches and no towing charges. It's the one-stop solution for getting rid of your unwanted vehicle in just a few short minutes. When your vehicles reach the end of the road, call us toll-free or visit kidneycar.ca. I suspect foul play. I think one of his fame walls was killed. Is that what you're suggesting, man? I gotta do this. What's going on? That chemical. What if you drank it? You wanna be the guy that finds out? They want us to think the system will protect us, but that's a lie. We protect us. We do.